started from exercise, tools, a debate part of Ontario, I believe. And it works better dry. Mm -hmm. It's got an insert in it. Well, I just realized something. I've got to put threads on that part. I do not have this face done up yet and threads. Okay, so before I actually start parting off my, my part over here, I've got to finish up this section of it. So that's what I'm doing right now. I was so excited I was going to get to use my new parting tool and I forgot a stage or a step. So back with the cutting tool. Yeah, I'm just a novice. Like I've done, I've done darts, stuff like darts, a few parts here and there. I made a uh, skate sharpener. Um, it's a table with a revolving uh, grinding wheel. Normally it's pink. And I put a, a diamond uh, surfacing tool in the front to give it a radius where the blade is. And uh, the only thing I hadn't done up yet is profiling um, uh, patterns. I, I, I think I found the information on that. To, to get the correct profile for the weight and stuff, but I hadn't made it up to that point yet. So, right now I'm going to find my zero at the end of my part. There, that's zero. Set my dial for a lift. Now I'm going to set up a dial for the rest of the amount of, I have to bring over my, there. So there's my dial. Set it to zero. There, that's zero. And you can't see that, can you? You can now. Alright, so my dial set to zero. And I've got to come in. I'm going to leave myself a little material to surface off. But I've got to come in. Where's that information? Okay, so since I'm looking at my drawing, my reference mark was supposed to be from here going outwards. So it's basically the largest diameter on the board, which is 1.562 minus the other one, which is a 1.125, 1 and 1 eighths, 437 thousandths. So, 
That's one, two, three. That's four and thirty-seven thousandths. Did I see? Yep, four thirty-seven. So another thirty-seven. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to set the zero on my cross cross line. this stage right I finished the uh, the indexing portion of it which was the previous piece and now I'm doing the locating ring and what the locating ring does is um, on the previous picture if you look back at it or freeze the frame and rewind it a little bit and look back at it. Um, there's a width here at the sleeve, like it's 1.5, 1.5, and it's wide enough to fit and the other piece is two inches, right? There's a width there that's going to be, um, it's a piece that actually does the ratcheting uh, on the system, okay. Uh, when I get to it, I'll name it. Right now, uh, I don't know it on the top of my head what 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 it's called. But this is just a retaining ring, right, with a grub screw in it or a, a, what, a grub screw. Okay. Uh, the outer portion is two inches, and the inner portion is. 1.5 with the precision down to the thousands. Okay, um, and this is a uh, number eight, uh, 32 inch national course. That's what I'm going to be putting in here. It's a, an Allen key, and the other end is used to actually dig into the material. So the Retaining ring actually stays on there when the work is being done, right? It's a retaining ring. Um, and this is the, the, the indexing ring. I finished it. That goes here. This is the uh, mandrel, which goes in there. Okay, so this goes around ratcheting. As this this can wobbles back and forth, or in a in a circle, click click click, it, it, it does the ratcheting right. Click click every revolution makes it click once, and there are twelve indexing collars on here or or grooves. Okay, so I'll give you a close up of the finished finished part. See, the threads and the lobe here. Okay, well that ring goes on here, and inside there is going to be the ratcheting system. So every time the lobe comes around once, click, it moves it once over, once over, once over. And this actually goes like this. Since the hole is not going to be in the middle here, it's going to be 30 thousandths off. It pushes it around in 60 thousand increments. And that does the reliefing. As it hits the cutter, it, it hits it in a way that it relieves the back face of, of, of 
of the cutting tooth. Okay? So I had a piece of leftover stock from the, the uh, indexing. Here, I'll get the terminology to make sure I get it right. The way the book actually calls these parts. Uh, the middle part is the mandrel. Uh, the other part is the indexing sleeve. It has 12 locking sleeves on it. And this is the locating ring. It says it should be made out of mild steel. Should be a quarter inch thick. And a two inch diameter is not important because there's no precision to it. But the inner diameter should be 1.5. Zero, zero. So they want a pretty close fit on this part. And I'm going to have to face off a little portion of that for that grubbing screw to actually on, on, on the indexing sleeve so that the grub screw actually grabs onto it, right? So I'm going to get on with this. Sixteen ninety or eighty five. Two sixteen eighty five. All right, I want sixteen eighty five. supposed to double speed on a file and there's supposed to be a left hand rule with a file so the file does you don't get into your chuck I, 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 I agree with the rule but it's hard to do it and you're supposed to remove your cutting tool from your 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 tool post these are safety precautions and that would hurt if I pulled my hand out quickly. So I'm going to double speed this. It's just a little file, it's a 12 inch. It's a, a Nicholson file, made in Brazil. Man, these are great. They're heavy. to cover your ways so you don't get grit on your ways if you get grit on your ways you don't see it and it's constantly gonna wear away at your ways when you're not Thank 
Said I had three thou. So I'm going to take a look and see what it. Oh, I brought it down a thou and a half. I have two thou to go. to take like uh, um, like you, if you're sawing like like 60 strokes a minute that's how you're supposed to file and you never pull back on uh, try to uh, always push on your file I'm 2,000 on the button and I'm gonna check to see if it's consistent throughout the piece so at the tip I'm under by three thou at the base um nine 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 five oh this thing must be not zero on five under that's why five tenths under yeah, a little bit about drills um you always use a smaller drill to start off with because if you're using a big drill like this you have a chisel edge on here and in this case it's one eighth of an inch okay the width of that chisel where the web is now that chisel edge if you're trying to push that through the metal um, you're going to dull out your drill so what you want to do is start off with a one eighth and that way this drill is going to push through a lot easier okay and um, uh, as far as speeds um, 1 8 well divide uh, f 4 times 400 you want 100 cutting surface um, cutting speed okay it's 100 feet per minute well multiplied by 4 and divided by 1 8 that should give you your speed you want to run that at. That's going to give you in the 3,000. So that's too. You can do it, but you, you, you judge your use your judgment, right? And this will be half inch, so uh, 800 RPM for the big half inch drill. I actually invested in cobalt drills, and man, it did a world of difference.
was take the uh, shortest, stubbiest horn bar I had. It's a carbide tool. These are normally used on cast iron. They'll cut steel, but they're better. They do better job on cast iron. But um, they're all I have right now. Until I get to a certain size, then I can use an insert. Like the bar, bone bar, with an insert, right? I think I'm done boring it. This is the inner diameter of that. Okay. I'm three thou over. Nope, two thou over. That'll be just enough clearance to, and the part's still warm, so it should shrink a bit. Since it's an ID and not an OD. So, that portion is done. Now I'm going to part it, and then I'm going to go over to the mill and actually put that grub screw in there. Shazam! There it is. Now I got it chamfer that inside and put that um, that sit screw in there